guys it is your boy Cesar here brings a video here today bringing guys a photoshop tour image on very cool metal simplistic weaving blur and pen tool video here today um it's just pretty it's, it's okay for first off right if you guys are not following my twitch we did a video or a twitch stream in which we uh sort of like did like a, a revamp of someone's work and we came up with something that was really really cool and attractive you probably probably saw flip <laughs> English is a very hard language. Um, you probably hopefully saw it in the beginning of this, uh, the video here today. Um, regardless, however, it, as you can see, though, it's a very cool sort of shiny, smooth, metal-y kind of texture. And then I don't know if I'm, I'm not too keen on the color scheme I went for here. I might go with like a lighter, like a hot pink. It might look really cool with this uh, color scheme that I have going on here. But there's nothing really going on in the sense of like um a, like a completion it's more or less like an asset sort of like a, a lower thirds or a, just a surrounding sort of abstract uh shape object whatever you want to call it and then just it can just look really really cool sometimes so um yeah we're gonna be teaching how to do that today it's basically just using the pen tool the blur um just a little bit more creative thought on how you're gonna actually formulate the shapes themselves and then at the end of it is a uh color you know kind of cc right that's gonna just gonna make it like look 10 times better right so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video today to one likes on the video you can see it down below which is most like the psd of the video as always and just for the record guys um we we've been we've been going up there we've been like we're at that 2k like a month almost subscribers a month what what is going on but i'm okay with it let's go right i'm just gonna god it's a lot this is a lot that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> All right, homies. So basically, I'm gonna just start off with using the pen tool. I'm gonna use the same shape that I have going on here. And uh, realistically, like I said before, right? There's no real formulation. There's no real like you have to do it this way kind of thing. But there are things you're gonna keep in mind of how to actually create the metal texture because it might look really awkward at first until you start adding a little more contrast and such. So just pay attention to that, and then you're gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, move, move in a little bit though. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing off. I'm going to go ahead and create this same shape here. Now, if you didn't know what this shape basically is this um let's stop pay attention to this for a second i believe it was like right here right if you go like right here let me just take this off because if people like oh, you didn't do it again like the thing Wait, relax anyway right so if i just click on the uh like on like lower left side of the actual banner design i'm also by the way in a 3000 by 1000 dimension and so if i just click you know somewhere i'll put the let's put the rules in here as well okay so lower like left corner we're gonna click over here in like the uh, i guess the upper left corner in the sense of like you know this little uh cross here <laughs> so we're just gonna bring this just like so we're gonna a nice little curve like this and it's just a very very simple curve so what's gonna happen here if i click over here and drag this up just a little bit you'll see a little bit of a little space right here this is kind of how i want to have a little bit of a little space <laughs> Uh, a little bit of space on the top right here like right around here and that's what i want to have because i want to do afterwards is i'm gonna hold alt click on this point here so there's no more sort of curves and i can just go around the banner like so and connect it and uh, have this sort of very nice little shape basically right here um might look a little choppy right here we might have to fix this a little bit you want to just kind of pay attention to making sure it's not a very uh a very di direct cut you want to make sure that's a very nice smooth transition so somewhere around maybe like that looks pretty good in my opinion right so i'm going to right click oh by the way i have these colors here these two codes I'm going to be using for the video here today. The hex code for the black or basically the base color is going to be hex code 101011. And then for the highlight color we're going to be using is uh, 5E6679. So if you guys put those hex code numbers inside your color picker, like if I, if you were to choose your color, if you put that number in here, it will just give you guys the same color that I am working with today, right? So my base color is that color that I said before, right here, the 101101111. Did I say that right? If I did, clutch. If I didn't, whatever. Um... <laughs> cool now the background color for this as well is uh hex code 0b 0b 0c just a simple old sort of like a black with a blue hue to it right so i'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead on this little layer here this is our like our base color layer this is the layer that's gonna start off for us right now if you guys wanted to you guys could just simply if you want to do this if you press i believe m your keyboard and then you control click if you hold control and you click on the actual thumbnail of the thing we just basically created right it's basically the selection again of the pen tooling so if i just move this up just like so what i'm gonna have to do is with the m tool selected which is the marquee tool i can go ahead and right click and transform selection that way i can make it bigger if need, uh, necessary right something like this i want to make sure like this part here goes over the banner so i don't want i don't want it to have like a sharp cut but i also want this to have like something like that right just basically like a bigger shape on the outside of it however this is perfect for us and what we can do now is we can go ahead and right click fill and we'll drop down use the color and we'll use the highlight color that we suggested which is the 5e one right press ok press ok again and then i'm gonna deselect so this is basically what you want to have here you're gonna have uh oops on a new layer by the way i didn't realize i didn't do that my bad also i feel like i need to move this down just a little bit and move this 
with the uh, transform selection a little bit more like this <clears throat> cool now we right click fill use the color the highlight color please and it's already on the highlight color press ok and now we're good so this is the highlight color right this is going to give us that really nice sort of metally kind of feel to it so what the first thing i would do for the for the record i think using a smart object is the best ability to when you apply any sort of filters on it because you can always go back and fix a little bit so what you do is right click on this highlight and you go to convert to smart object so what's going to happen here if i go to blur uh blur blur right here gaussian blur sorry and i'm gonna use 19 radius i use 19 radius because i feel like it was the most smoothest transition between sort of like a metally texture not just like being a blur right so i'm gonna press ok so now if you ever wanted to you can just turn off the blur if, if so or jump right back in and be like i don't know if i like 19 i kind of like 21 i kind of like 17 whatever you can fix that as so now right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just now click on this layer masking. What's gonna happen here is with this mask tool now, I can press uh, B on my keyboard, which is the brush. And if I use a black brush, I will be able to erase, as you see, right? And so what you're gonna do is gonna basically erase sort of in a nice, I'm gonna, I'm kind of swooping in this motion here. I'm like doing a motion like so. Oops, let me just use a better color. Oh, you can't do it on that. I'm gonna ding dong. All right, let's just do this. All right, we're kind of doing like this motion with my eraser just so I can get like that nice sort of like look to it right just so keep that in mind that's exactly the kind of motion I'm using when I'm actually using this brush the black brush with a fair size uh, diameter just simply going in that motion just like so somewhere area right here where it might be too much I'm gonna erase it a little bit right so I'm gonna go right here and erase this a little bit so this is gonna happen to see is you're gonna kind of see it more as like a sort of metally kind of shine and that's kind of what you want to go for right so uh, if you don't like something as well, you can go ahead and use a white brush and you can fill it right back in if you guys choose to. And let's just say if you don't want to use, um, you want it to be like a little more hinted and not just like directly there, go to your opacity up top and lower this down about 30. And then when you click, it won't be 100%. So if I just click once, right, that's 30% opacity. But if I keep clicking, you can see it'll give you that opacity that you originally had before, right? So uh, there's that. Let's go ahead and kind of put it. A little more like so which I think looks pretty good just a little bit more highlights right just like that you can use it as a highlight as well so um okay on this side as well let's go ahead and this side as well let's do opacity at a hundred and black brush and do something like that now cool so we basically have the sort of like nice little highlight to it so you can see if I were to bring up this right here let's go up here please you can kind of see what's going on right here. That's exactly what we're creating right now. However, we have no real contrast yet, so it's going to be looking a little bit awkward. So I'm going to go ahead and just make another new layer, and we're going to do another layer just right on top of this layer. So something like right here, right? So I'm going to go right here. We're going to use, once again, the uh, base color, which is this color here, which is the 1011, and uh, press OK. So we have the base color now. What I'm going to do, actually, is the base color is going to have a little bit of a darker color for this section right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control u it's going to bring up the hue and saturation tool and what this is going to do is whatever you selected whatever layer you were selected and you press control u on you can change the color the lightness the darkness the saturation if you had color in it as well um very easily so if i'm going to take my lightness i'm just drop this down by about negative eight or so right just so i'm going to make it a little more darker than it should be right for the original color we had before so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make a new layer pen tool and we're just going to simply pen tool the same sort of like kind of corresponding shape that's going on the outside press uh fill excuse me, right click press fill path color use the highlight color press ok and the same exact rinse and repeat you're gonna go ahead and right click on this convert it to smart objects so you can always go back to it gaussian blur we're gonna activate that press uh 19 and then go to the masking tool here and we're gonna press the inner keyboard for the brush and then the black brush and then we're gonna simply erase i'm gonna erase more like in this kind of way right and then i'll come back in afterwards which I think that looks pretty good too. So you're just kind of like really messing around with, uh, let's see, messing around with like, uh, I guess weights of how kind of high, how much highlights you want to have or whatever. You can have something for a reference if you want to, but I think you're good to go usually. Hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and just add some highlights in here. Because you have it a little bit just by using like a since we kind of erased it at 100% opacity so if you use 30% we're going to go ahead and just basically be adding highlights in a sense because we're not adding you know additionally it's going to be this is like an 80 opacity if I click again then it's 100 kind of thing right so 80 because I'm just adding basically little highlights to it and if you take a little bit of time on it it'll look really really nice and really good something like that looks pretty good right so um okay right so if I just open this up again for a second okay so we're basically done with like this bar here let's do one more on the bottom right here 
So for that, we're going to make a new layer. We're going to make this all the way on the bottom, though. Because <laughs> we want this below every single thing we just did. Right? Just something like this now. All right. Boom. Come on. Work with me. All right. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color that we just selected before and then lower the hue and saturation. Now, so I'm going to choose, choose this color here, which is basically the same base color as this, just by simply hovering over the color just like so. Right? And that's going to have that nice little, uh, little bit of a hue there or a darker hue there. So I'm going to go ahead and just go into it and do the same exact thing again. Let's go ahead and drop down uh, this color here for the fill. And we're going to use that nice highlight color. And then once again, right click. Uh, convert to smart object just a good habit to have things on smart objects so you can always go back to it for the record right it's, it's not necessary in this step by the way and we're just gonna go in oops we're gonna go in here and i'm gonna use a 30 percent opacity brush just to make sure i kind of really kind of have to dig into it so i think that right there looks pretty good i like that okay so the whole entire thing is not going to be complete right now you might be saying to yourself like if you're doing one on your own you're not really like maybe copying mine in a sense uh, you're probably just like, I don't really see the whole metal, right? You don't really see the whole metal aspect. And okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start to push the contrast a little more. The contrast has to be, something has to be referenced as darker than this metal texture. Something has to be, you know, uh, darker than the highlights, darker than the actual base color. So that's what we're gonna be working with in a quick second. Before we do that, however, we're gonna add that little bit of that, that texture, right? So the way to do that is we're gonna simply, I'm just gonna check my time. I don't, can't really see the time with my, my mic is in the way. Um, so I'm going to just simply click on these two layers here. So I'm going to find this big layer here, which is this layer, these two layers here. I'm going to group these together, press control J to merge, uh, to duplicate them and then press control E to then merge them together. So now you're going to have one layer with the two things, uh, intact. However, I made a duplicate be uh, before I did it and hid this layer right here behind it. Um, just in case they ever mess up or whatever, and you have to fix something that's fine. Right? So now if I go over here, I'm going to go to uh, filter, uh, noise. And then add noise. We're gonna add uh, once simply one amount noise on a uniform setting with a monochromatic um, option set. Press OK, and you're gonna have this really nice little simple just noise texture basically. And in a sense, it'll feel like more of like a grainy texture. So if you like were to kind of rub your your uh, hand over something metal, I feel like that's the sort of sound sash whatever um, feeling you would get when you actually would touch a metal, right? So the same thing is gonna happen for all these right here. We're just gonna do the same thing. Control J, Control E, merge it together, and then go to noise, add noise, just like so. Same thing with this one down here. Control or click these two. Control J, Control E. I comp press Control G to merge it. So let me just do it one more time for you guys. Um, these two layers here, the bottom layers, which is these two layers right here, right? Control G is to group them together. Control J is to go ahead and duplicate them. And then while they're, you know, that duplicated one, you can hide this one right here by clicking this I. Then you press Control E to merge it all together, right? Very, very simple. Okay, filter, noise, add noise. Nice. So we got more of like a more of a texture sort of like, you know, feel to it. And I'm also looking at like this little curve here. It might not be the best idea to have this right here because it kind of feels like this goes to a sharp corner. But that's just more or less like a uh, uh, problem with you would arise and kind of have to fix if you're doing it for like a client or something like that. Right. However, for this right here is pretty good to go. Now, I want to show you guys something really, really cool. So I'm going to go above everything. We're going to group this together for a second. Let's call this uh, the main base. Right. We're going to do that. Oh, there's something in my nose, please. Make a new layer. I'm gonna take this pen tool here and you see this line right here i'm gonna reference this line as i do my pen tool for a second i'm gonna go pretty like close to the corner of this or to the edge of this something like that right but i'm just i'm really referencing the uh the line that's going right here so i'm trying to like copy the the same kind of like way it's going right i'm gonna then alt click on this which will get rid of the little curve curvature point right if i alt click you'll see that it'll just be a nice straight line again so what I'm gonna do is once I press Alt click on this little anchor point here, I can then click back over here towards the left, and then I'm gonna take my uh, Control key, click this little uh, point here, this little extension point, and I can then really nice controlled movement to what I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get more of like a kind of like a sharp, think of like a claw, and or just think of like a just sort of like a uh, point, and then just kind of still corresponding um, this little uh, line right here, right? So I'm gonna connect it together. So you're gonna have something like that. Okay, so with this, I'm gonna go ahead and on this new layer, we're just gonna fill this in with a black. It doesn't really matter too much or the same color as this, whatever. And what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take my fill. I'm gonna lower this down to about 30%. 
<clears throat> now this part is not really tricky or whatnot however if you don't have patterns you're just not going to be able to be successful with this part here however you don't need my pattern pack but there is that option to have it. it's for three dollars if you go just simply type in uh selfie.com slash switch you can find my pattern pack um and or just look in the description i'll hopefully put it in there if i don't it's you know it's like one of the first things you'll see in the actual site um but you can also probably just type in like free texture pack or you can even use a texture it doesn't really have to be an actual pattern whatever um you just use a pattern pack in my opinion i would think it's just the easiest quickest way whatever I'm not trying to self sell but it's also one of the things that really create this uh kind of effect so what's going to happen here is i'm going to go ahead and just uh open an inner shadow just like so and with this inner shadow, i'm going to take my distance make sure my angle is at about 90 make sure my opacity i'll say is at about mm, 65 we'll say for now take my distance lower this all the way down to zero take my size drop this up quite a bit you'll see what's happening right here we're going to reference that right just about so i'm gonna say the opacity of this needs to be about 70 now and i think that looks pretty good to how i wanted to have it right so i'm gonna press okay i'm gonna zoom in for a second to show you guys right nice little inner shadow kind of like an indention is what i'm referring to here for this so for this layer i'm gonna make a duplicate of it so with Control j on your keyboard you're gonna make a duplicate of this same exact thing right what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna turn off the inner shadow double click on this again and what I'm going to do before I do that, let's lower this fill all the way down to zero. So the first one's going to have it at 30%. The second um, duplicate of it is going to be at 0% with also the inner shadow no longer there. Double click on this. <sighs> pattern overlay. And we're going to use this nice little pattern here. As you can see, it's kind of like a straight sort of like diagonal line going like so. And I'll press OK. And with this, then I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it. But you can see for some reason, I my patterns here are a little bit of a lighter blue. If you just want to, you can either double click on it and use a color overlay. And or for me, I want it to be black. So I'm just going to press control U, take my lightness, drop this down to zero. And now it's black, right? Very simple. So what we're going to have is a layer that is a pattern, right? And also I probably should have before I do the rasterization, let me make sure this is at 100. It's at 200. I want it to be more skinnier and tighter. So it's going to do for that, just like so right very very nice now so it's a very nice little texture sort of uh uh almost looks like a carbon kind of effect right like a carbon fiber kind of effect um but also in the sense that it's a really nice contrast in diagonal lines being that we have had all of course curves and this time we're having like diagonal lines plus a darker inner shadow for an indention which will really help the contrast but the really cool thing about this is if i make a new layer right and i'm gonna clip math mask this new layer onto this layer right here which is the actual pattern layer only the pattern layer i'm gonna make this the pattern layer and this is the shadow we'll call it the shadow layer right and this is going to be the light layer okay very simple so what's going to happen here is press b on my keyboard and i'm going to change my foreground color to what color did i want to try i want to try like a hot pink like something like very very nice like this right i'm going to just simply and what's going on here my opacity is at 30 in my brush okay so i'm going to go ahead and just get in here and kind of give myself a very cool i can start from here i think a very cool highlight like this right and that'll give some really 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 nice contrast so i like that right there um this could even been like thicker or whatever but for the sense of for the sake of the tutorial this is fine right so i'm gonna do one more really quickly on like let's just say where should i put it like maybe right here let's just put it right here okay put it right here we'll do the same thing alt click and then let's try to make sure this looks still looks good all right we'll say like right there and then yeah that looks okay you can really play this for a lot i'm not too satisfied with it but for the sake of the tour this is fine uh fill the color in with that nice black it'll be nice and black and what i'll do is take this opacity 30 percent and i might have to like move it a little bit though yikes okay We'll just say like right about there right what i can do is i can just click my or excuse me copy this layer style throw this layer style onto this one right so then i can just go ahead and duplicate this layer and i will get rid of this but i can then just go back into it again go into the uh, pattern overlay make sure we're on 100 scaling we'll pass these at 100 that's perfectly fine then i'm gonna rasterize this layer that way because right now it's still like that shape right if i press Control t you'll see this it's still the shape right here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rasterize it that way i can then change the color its own self right just like so make a new layer clip mask a new layer which is going to be the color layer four can colors that pink and then i'm just go back in here and just add a nice little, little pink uh hue to it right there right so uh i probably i could probably go up a little more because right now what's happening is there's no real balance going on however it's okay for the sake of the tutorial like i said it's pretty it looks pretty okay you see how like mine goes all the way up here uh 
I really want to fix it, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it. it. Just would It just wouldn't look right. And it'll also give you guys another chance to kind of figure it out. So I'm going to go pretty much a little bit further because I want it to really stretch. I want that color to really stretch. So I'm going to go around here. And uh, let's make a nicer one like so. Okay, that'll be okay. Connect these things together. Um, That looks a little bit better, right? Fill this in. Then I'm going to go into here. Uh, oops, right here. I'm going to copy this layer style put this on this one just like so and i make a duplicate of it get rid of the inner shadow double click on it pattern overlay use the dot uh slash lines one i'm gonna make my scaling at 100 rasterize the layer again control u to bring up the color to black right and oops fuck, press cancel love okay just like so make a new layer then clip mask that layer then take my brush a nice soft brush nice little uh hot pink foreground color and then i'm gonna just click and drag and give myself a little more color just like so Kind of like there. Right there is pretty good. Nice little color. And I feel like that looks just kind of a little more better in my opinion, which is uh, what I want to have. Okay. So last but not least, we're just going to group these two things together, right? In their own separateness. We're just going to call this like, um, like pattern two. And this is pattern one, right? Pattern one. I'm also naming this because if you guys, of course, hit 200 likes on the video, you guys will get this PSD and you guys will kind of know what's going on here. So right now there's just a little bit less color that's happening. So I'm going to do a very, very simple technique here. And I'm going to go ahead and just simply by uh, press V on my keyboard, right? And if I hold control, you can select layers wherever they might be. As you can see what's happening, I'm like holding control. Sorry, my hair is a little bit wet from the shower. Uh, holding control. And then like I'm just like clicking you can see it's selecting any layer that I ha uh, have clicked over so I want to select this shape right here so all I, all I do is hold control and it'll give me that layer right there right so I'm gonna hold control again and then click the thumbnail which is like there right so it's gonna select this just like this what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna make a new layer we're gonna make it above everything and with the same color you've been using for the inner shadow stuff I'm gonna then go in here and give myself the opportunity to really add some color that's going on throughout the design let's just say like about like so which is pretty nice right i might shake my take my uh, eraser zero hardness and kind of make sure i kind of finesse it a little bit something like that and i think i should add a little more pink right here as well on this shape right here control click on it make a new layer i'm just gonna make it above it at this time whatever it doesn't really matter too much and i'm gonna give myself a little bit of pink on like the left side going right and i'll go back to my eraser and erase that just a little bit so that's gonna give me more contrast it's also gonna give me a little more color and it'll look a lot more better in my opinion now if you guys want to as well you can go ahead and sort of like say if you, like same thing with this right here right let's say if you wanted to have like a nice pink going on kind of like this kind of thing right here but more of like a light kind of flare or uh an aurora is what i like to call it right so i'm gonna click around like so i'm gonna really focus on this angle right here this curve that i made originally is the angle that i'm focusing on all i did after that was just go up and around and connect it around the banner design around the actual um uh whatever shape i'm at right whatever excuse me document size i'm at what i can do now is right click make a selection with the pen tool still selected right press ok then what's going to happen here is you can make a new layer i'm just gonna make it above everything take my brush pink brush and give myself a nice highlight wherever i kind of want it like right here right a little more finesse to it okay <clears throat> then I can take my eraser since I have these hard corners or whatever if you do have hard corners or a hard like You saw like, how my pencil was before if I just do this again You see how like this dip goes right like down that dip over let's say you wanted to do more up this way And you had like a, a little more pink this way. Let me just show you right if you had more of like a pink this way What you can do then is take your eraser and then just erase it to where you want to have it just like so right Then you can have pink in a little more spots than just you know the highlight for the shape whatever you can make this smaller if you want to and I think it looks pretty good. I'll take this shape again, duplicate it over. I, what I did to do that in uh, is just click control click on it to find the layer, right? You see how that finds the layer. Then I held alt and then dragged it over when I found the layer, just like so. So I can do with this layer now is I'll just go ahead and add a little bit of pink right here. I got a sneeze. <coughs> Jesus, please. Okay. Eraser. And I'll say that looked pretty good. All right, cool. So. I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm gonna go ahead and just then show you guys really quickly. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of like, I don't know, I'm gonna combine combine everything together and just make it one simple layer. Um, before I do that, let's make sure that this is no longer in the way. And then I'm just gonna take only the shapes that we just did, group that together, I'm just gonna call this shape, whatever. Make a duplicate of it, and I'm gonna control E to merge it all together so I can then just kinda have this and like do whatever I want. I can do something like this. 
which I think would look pretty badass too. All I did was like flip the horizontal. What I did was like, right, the same exact shape, control T, and then flip it vertically, I think I did, right? And if you want to flip it horizontal as well, after you did it vertically, you can have something like this, which is not bad either, but I think this will probably work for this sake, whatever, to, for the tutorial, a little bit better. And what I'll do is I'll put my name right here. We'll just call it metal again. Not my name, just whatever you want to have it. Right? And I'm going to put a simple layer style on it. Just like so, for now. And uh, the only sense I want to show you guys this in a, like if you, in a finalized banner is what I want to do afterwards is combine everything together, including your, your text, whatever. The first layer on the top, imagine this is not here. So the top layer, all the way down to the actual, even the background layer, okay? So I'm going to press Control J, Control E to merge it all together. That'll give me the, the exact same thing you have going on, but in a duplication form where you can just have it all in one layer. So what I'm going to do now is, of course, naturally put it to smart object. You want to always have it on a smart object. Go to filter, uh, camera filter, uh, camera raw filter, excuse me. And what's going to happen here is <laughs> it's going to put you in this really cool sort of color correction sort of. Uh, it's more or less for uh, photos, but we can use it for pretty much everything if you want. Right, you can kind of zoom in you can get whatever uh, you can see it while you're moving it around you know like your vibrance and whatnot i'm gonna put that at zero but for the sake of just having to know what you're doing click this little y right here this will give you a preview of a before and after so i'm gonna just kind of like focus on this section right here so if i move the color you'll see that you can see what it looks like before what it looks like after so i'm gonna do personally is first i'm gonna take my uh, clarity and i'm gonna throw this up what this is going to do is give me that a real nice texture it'll uh really take out the grain the noise it basically clearly is like a sharpen it's going to really take the grainy sort of texture and pull that out even more and give you that really, really nice metal texture take my blacks here drop this down just a little bit we'll just say negative 15 for now whites up those are highlights right you want to bring that up just a little bit you can see what's happening right now it looks very 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 nice what i'm going to do now is take my shadows we're going to drop this down just a little bit maybe it is i wouldn't really say shadows do much for you right in this uh section even uh, maybe if you have like an actual um like a color scheme going on with the actual metal textures but i use very neutral sort of blues so it doesn't really matter too much for me my highlights drop this up quite a bit let's say 15, uh, plus 15. if you want to mess around with temperature to get a color correction you guys can i mean that looks pretty badass if i'm not gonna lie to you and it does look really nice and if you want to as well you can add a little bit of vibrance i don't want my things to be too blue but you can add a little bit of vibrance if you guys wanted to let's just say 10. what i'll do is a second to show you guys what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put this up even uh i would say even with the vibrance but i'll just say half of the vibrance so plus five so you can see what a before and after looks like i'll press ok and for the sake of just showing you guys let's say you look at it you're just like ah it doesn't really look i don't really like the t uh, the temperature you don't really like the color being too like too far out or whatnot then you can double click on this again because you had it a smart object and go ahead and just reopen it and i'm gonna say over oh, okay the the temperature needs to go down to zero and i do like how this looks but maybe i want it to be a little bit brighter or saturation bring out the color even more and maybe even the sharpen uh or the clarity in this say, uh, sense even more as well if you want to you can go into curves detail you can even change the hue of the color so if you want to let's say like magenta you can change it to red if you guys want to you can do really a lot of things in this color correction um sort of like you know table i would say press ok and then you can get something like this which i think is pretty badass too so you can see how well things happen even like the stuff like the lines dotted lines even or the the slash lines look really really nice too and uh in the sense of the tutorial i think we are pretty much done and showing you guys how to really create something really cool and kind of metally so um i know my tutorial wasn't more or less like a sort of like how to create a banner in a sense but in a way this is kind of like a banner uh kind of like a banner formulation formation right you can just put your links in here whatever on the right hand side if you wanted to have it like this but realistically if you guys saw my example that i showed in the beginning of this, uh, the actual video here you'll see that it's more or less kind of like how you formulate it if you want to you can have one big shape right here um in the sense of what i did for my uh thing here and i'll show you really quickly is what i did for mine was i focused on shapes being right here and then right here and then a little bit like this right it was more like that oh oh my gosh let's go like that right so then i had this space as as well but not as even and kind of like it kind of looks a little bit awkward symmetrical like this but it all depends on how you kind of mess around with it but that's the whole point of being a little more creative with it and then you can probably get something really cool and original and still just have that difference you know that that, that nice different uh differential look to it but also reference to my style anyway that is a video here today homies i hope you guys enjoy your weekend um starting on monday and i'm gonna be out until wednesday and then i don't know if i'm going to be going away for like another week but you guys don't really notice that very much um unless you like watch my streams and whatnot but
But you guys won't notice. I, I, I make sure I cover you guys anyway. But as always, guys, if you want to like on the video, you'll see it down below. Uh, so don't forget to leave a like on the video. Don't forget to comment down anything you want to see me do personally. If you probably saw something, and be like, hey, I kind of want to see you do this. I wouldn't mind seeing. I wouldn't mind seeing what you guys want to see as well, right? So also don't forget to follow me on Twitter at SwissHQ. Don't forget to check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SwissHQ for any pre-mans and packs. It was three dollars, which I was refer referring to as the uh, pattern pack. So if you guys want to get that too, um, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I do have to go though now so that concludes the video here today much love i'll talk to you guys later so i told you out i would keep smiling stay positive and uh stay freaking better guys stay freaking productive i can never say that <laughs> later <laughs>